Hi, this is Paco Nathan from O'Reilly Media. And it's a pleasure today to have Paul Ivanov. Welcome, Paul. Thank you. From Bloomberg. Uh, now, you've been involved in uh, open source here with Jupiter, the Jupyter community. How did you get involved with this in the first place? So um, I've been using open source a lot. I think everyone sort of starts being an open source contributor when they start using things. Sure. And so um, I started in, in high school using Linux and Red Hat. And, uh, and then after I finished college and started in grad school, I started using um, Python. The scientific Python stack was just getting started, just barely usable enough, yeah. barely competitive with, with MATLAB. and. Uh, Within a semester at Berkeley, Fernando Perez showed up on campus. Oh, interesting! Great timing. Great timing, yeah. <laughs> great timing for me. Great timing for 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 the community. And so I started contributing to Matplotlib and IPython back then. Uh, so this would have been 2006, 2007. Wow. Yeah. And so you know, Fernando will, tells the story as well of you know anything but my thesis is really appealing. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. If, if, exactly. And. That, that's the way things work out for me as well, is that it was a lot more fun to work on tools that were going to be used by lots of scientists yeah. back then. And you know, data science wasn't even a term that people threw around yet. Sure. No, and so, uh, so yeah, that's, that's how I got started and got hooked into it and just kept, kept coming back. And, you know, no, no good deed goes unpunished. And, so. and look at the results. I mean, this morning we had the LIGO project being presented. I yeah. Think, like Nobel Prize worthy physics. Yeah. Um, yeah. Based on some of this. No, it's work. amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's been a wild ride and I couldn't have expected it to have. Like, it always felt like we were doing the right work, but. You know, you couldn't you couldn't have imagined that you know now high school students are using <laughs> Jupiter and yeah. Well, okay. So first yeah. off, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate yeah. that. Just on behalf of everybody using Jupiter. Oh, dude, please no. I mean, I, the thanks goes to everyone that, that's contributing in whatever way. If it's users, if it's reporting bugs, if it's writing code, I think it's all it's all great. Yeah. So so thank thank you. Thank yeah. Now you're on the uh, uh, Project Jupiter Steering Committee mm -hmm. or Steering mm -hmm. Council, I believe yep, it's called. That's right. Uh, yeah. And and what areas do you contribute to in there? Yeah. So right now it's sort of we're we're a lot of people, and uh, I started off on the project just being a contributor, a core core contributor, committing code, writing code, uh, working under Fernando uh, at Berkeley um, on on the first more Sloan, Sloan grant. Oh, interesting. These yeah. days. Those of us that were doing that back then are still writing code, but not that's not our main focus. I'd say, right? We have to we have to keep this pipeline going of people. Right. So some of the things that I've been doing lately is just organizing events and and reaching out to people and making sure that right. we're growing, we're growing the community and we're growing the protocol in in a healthy way. Right. You're working on the there's the workshops. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. A way to expand the developer community, the committer base. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because it's you know. It's much. You can go further together. With the more people that we have involved, the, the better off we all are. Yeah. Fantastic. Uh, now, of course, one item of big news over the past year here is about the uh, 2017 uh, ACM Software System Award, right. which puts Jupiter right alongside World Wide Web, <laughs> right. Unix, a few other TCP/IP, yeah. just a few things. Mm, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no pressure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, wh what's the significance of that, or in, from your perspective, what's the significance of that recognition? I think the significance of that is that with visibility comes a lot of responsibility. Oh, okay. I think w when we started off, it was almost it was almost, we were the underdogs, right? Yeah. Like, don't use MATLAB, don't use proprietary software, use this stuff. You build it for the scientists, by the scientists. And, uh, and these days, we have to, with, with such a great honor, we, we have to really take responsibility for expanding our user base and making sure that anyone can use and contribute to Jupyter. So whether, whether or not it's making it more accessible, right. making it in, in terms of, uh, Language, uh, in terms of like you know, making it inter internationalizing Jupiter in a way, so so that it's accessible to worldwide, making it accessible so that people with with vision impairment can use it, things like that. I think that's really, to me, what one of the challenges is 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 by by getting such a great honor is that we we really have to you know work a lot harder and and we can't we can't 
just sit around and, and pretend like we're the small little project that happened yeah. to that happened to you know curry favor with a lot of people for the time being. You know, we're we're we have to work to be inclusive of everyone. We have to, and we owe it to to, to everyone. We owe it to humanity. I think. Well, and and the accessibility and the inclusion. Those have been two hallmarks of Jupiter all along, yeah. and so just That's amplifying true. that yeah. is yeah. really important. Um, now, also, uh, Bloomberg is a platinum sponsor of NumFocus, mm -hmm. and right. uh, there's the, the Community Sprint Day coming up. I'm looking forward to that yep, on Saturday. Yep, just Saturday. Yeah, that's uh, going to be great. And, and there's, there's funding of the workshops, uh, other community investment there. Um, why is Bloomberg interested in an open source project like this? Yeah, it's, I think it comes down to two things, I guess, really, is that we want to be able to work on the latest, greatest technology. We're, Bloomberg is a technology company, sure. right? So we need, we need new infrastructure, we need new analysis tools, and Jupiter provides that, certainly. Uh, we also need to attract people okay. to be able to, to have them work. Jupiter is a growing project, Bloomberg is a growing company, right? So we have 5,000 developers, over 5,000 developers now. About 2,000 of them use Python. So by bringing expertise, Jupiter expertise in-house, and sort of, um, how would I say this? Um, just pushing it forward, outward, right. uh, from, from Bloomberg, right? There's a lot of smart people that work at Bloomberg, and we, wanna, we want to make them, part of my job is to make them open source contributors as well. Um, so yeah, I think that's why Bloomberg is, is that involved in, in Jupiter specifically, but in open source in general, is that to give back to the community that's provided, like so many tools that we use are open source tools, and we've been contributing to them, and Jupiter is yet another example, yet another way of doing that. Excellent. So uh, uh, building on this, mm -hmm. one of the contributions this year, one of the major contributions yeah. within the community into the project has been about Jupiter Lab, and mm -hmm. you've been very much involved in that. Yeah, sure. Uh, and it's you're creating more of a, a tailored environment uh, through use of extensions. That's right. Um, can you talk a little bit about this this kind of the, the difference, the, the delta between where we were before with notebooks and what Jupiter Lab is bringing? Yeah. So notebooks started off, as you know, just as you know, code execution. You you can communicate results. It's a document that you can share with people and. Um, that's, that's sort of where we started. But pretty soon people were like, well, but I like a little file browser. Yeah. Okay, well, that makes sense, right? You've got to click these documents. Well, you already have text editing in there, so why not like a fully-fledged text editor? Makes sense. Yeah. And pretty soon, and this is, this is you know, back, I guess, 2007 or something like that, you have Python and C++ developers writing the JavaScript of those days. So it was it was really rough to extend that system. It's sort of a wild west. You could have any extension that you want, but um, at some point we brought in a terminal as well, and uh, it was it was hard to move that project forward. Yeah. So Jupyter Lab is a rethinking of the making it possible to do the sorts of things that we were we knew we needed to get done, but but building these components so we can kind of snap them together and remix them and allow others to have well-defined extension points to come in that are, are going to continue to work as we evolve the system. So that if, if you make something that works for the notebook part of the rendering, that's not going to break when somebody else changes the file browser and oh, things okay, like that. Okay, good. There's yeah. some hygiene. There's yeah. hygiene separation, yeah. exactly. Or so that you can take these components and say, I, you want the classic notebook feel. Right. You, only, you want to hit a URL, and you want it to just be editing in a notebook. Jupyter Lab right now is more of an IDE environment, right? You have menu system, you have uh, tiled window support, sort of you can open documents up side by side, drag and drop between them, but maybe you don't want that. Maybe you, what you really want is the thing that we used to have in the classic notebook. Well, you could take the Jupyter Lab components and put them in a separate remix, and now continue to use them. And as those evolve, that, those same extensions that you wrote now wor will work in across two places. So it's really about growing this. You, you'll have a trunk of the tree that, you know, that is Jupyter Lab sort of core that lots of people will use. And then splintering off from that, maybe the LIGO collaboration will add their own plugins. And they'll, they'll continue to be part of the tree, but they, they'll have separate branches that are unique to their, to their domains. That's the thinking behind it. 
So in a way, the project did pay down a lot of tech debt. Yeah, really, definitely. But as an investment in the future. Yeah. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Very excellent. Uh, so I'm curious. I mean, where uh, what's kind of coming up next on the horizon? You're in a very interesting vantage point, hmm. having had a lot of history of the project and also seeing a lot in the community. Um, yeah. What are some areas that you're excited about looking forward? I'm I'm really excited about just having more people in the community and really enabling them to and giving them visibility. I think that's one of the things that 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 I've been tremendously fortunate just coming into this project early and the visibility that I've gotten. Yeah. But I think there's so much good stuff to do here. It's just it's so much fun and the people are great. Um, so I'm I'm just really looking forward to writing this out and and but. I, I'll stop myself immediately when I say writing it out because that makes it seem like we're coasting. Like yeah, there's right. hard work <laughs> to do. I'm really looking forward to doing the fun hard work ahead. I guess, yeah. yeah, and seeing where we will go. Because so I mentioned Jupiter Lab. That's one of the next generation user interfaces that Project Jupiter is. You know, t and, and Bloomberg and Anaconda have been working on and have pushed forward. There are others, right? Uh, there's Interact, which is a different front end. And right. so we're, we, we now, at this point, getting back to the paying down the tech debt, we've engineered these systems enough, they're decoupled enough, right. that we can mix in these components where Interact, which was this uh, desktop application, electron-based application, where you could double-click a notebook and be able to run it without, there's no notebook server, it's just running there. Um, now that also can run on top of the classic notebook server. Right. So it's an... It's, those are those use a different technology stack, but still provides you with the classic sort of this hybrid of the classic and the new. So I think we we have so much we've attracted so much attention and have had the the luxury of of being able to pay down all this tech debt that there's just a lot of places to do interesting interesting things, think up new user interface ideas or think up new protocol extensions things like that. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, no, it's going to be great. And I'll also add to what you say, just working alongside some of the Project Jupiter Steering Council uh, through the conference here. I know that the conferences already require like 14-hour days on <laughs> end, but yet y'all are like coming in and doing full day's work in the community yeah. while you're here pulling the rest of the time too. So uh, I'm, I'm super impressed with what's going on. No, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's great. Wonderful. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.